Welcome to the Macroeconomic News. I'm Renko the Rosielum, a slave to the news until I die. Our top story today, Ox. What do I mean with that? Well, let's find out. So there's going to be something happening on the 11th. Actually, a bunch of stuff happening. But first off, we're going to start out with... It's Nayuta! It's the Ox Princess! So here we have Nayuta right here, and I'm going to say it right away before I even go on about what kind of character she really is. Look at her head. And then look at her weapon, which is like a little fan thingy. Um, she's basically... She's basically the Iron Fan Princess, also known as the Ox Princess from the Journey to the West. Uh, series of old Japanese ancient folklore, which is like, wait a second, she's based on an ancient kind of folklore, in this case the Chinese folklore, um, that was written down in the Journey to the West. Well, yes, because she's a member of Folklore of Zero. We've got, like, now a second member of Folklore. I guess she's not, like, officially a member of Folklore of Zero, but she kind of is. Uh, also, once again, her background. You see this little swoosh? It's not specifically the logo, uh, like the team logo for Folklore of Zero, but it's like this circular swoosh. It's very reminiscent of the Folklore of Zero swoosh, right? So basically what I'm trying to say is, she Folklore, man. Um, also, that's going to be an event by that. But before I talk about the event, um, not that kind of event, we need to talk a little bit about what our character is like in case you don't want to like watch the however long it's going to take, um, <coughs> like 15 minute long uh, character review once she actually is released. Uh, you just want a quick overview if you want to know if you want to pull for her. So she is a support type with at least it seems like decent stats. Excel charge this. What does she actually do? Her connect gives damage up, excel up, and it heals a little bit. We haven't had a character that actually heals really well since Irui, um, but she's not a heal type. This is the only heal that she has, but yeah, whatever. Uh, excel up is fine, damage up is fine, but yeah, it's all right. And then we have the Magia. What does the Magia do? Damages all enemies. It does defense down to all enemies. Okay, not that important. Skill seal all enemies. Also not that they're very important. Remove granted effects. That can sometimes be interesting. So overall, it seems like the Magia is kind of a tech thing where there's some specific enemies you might want to use it on. But overall, not that amazing. Like, it's not like the kind of uh, Magia that you just fire off and be like, hey, now I have buffs on me. Awesome. Because it doesn't actually buff you at all. It doesn't give you any buffs, it just gives specific debuffs to the enemy that most of the time won't do anything. So, yeah, I'm gonna slam her into the ground because of that when I actually do my character review. Or maybe I won't, because her SE, at least the few things that we see down here, is actually rather interesting, so she might be a character that kind of lives on her SE. Her active is Dark Attribute Resistance Down, which is uh, pretty good. Pretty good. If you're running a dark type team, it's going to be pretty darn amazing. Some people uh, are probably going to use her on uh, high ranking Kimochi whenever the next light Kimochi comes around, where you use like dark enemies, uh, dark units to attack the light type Kimochi. Then maybe th she would be slotted into some teams for a high ranking damage, and she would be pretty nice on that. And yeah, that's about it. For dark teams, this is pretty nice to have as an active, to have like this on all enemies for five turns, which is really good. What else does it do at the beginning of each uh, of a quest, like when you start any battle, uh, every everyone gets a five turn light attribute cut, damage cut, light damage cut on everyone for five turns. Oh, cool. She's anti-light. Awesome. And what else does, it, does she have? She has status aim and resistance up to all allies when the battle starts for five turns. So yeah, when the battle starts, she gives every single ally like a 10% status aim and resistance for five turns, and she gives all allies a light attribute uh, damage cut. For high, super high-end stuff, this is, doesn't mean anything, it's completely pointless, but if you're just a random casual player um, who is still building up their account, this is quite all right, actually. The other one is just anti-bind uh, on here, which is, yeah, whatever. What do we have here? The Memoria is one of the best memorials that I've ever seen on an unlimited banner. By the way, I need to say this right away, this is an unlimited banner, and you might have re remembered that the last unlimited banner that we had was uh, Sasha, Alexandra. And Alexandra was a story gacha. What that meant is that you couldn't get spooked on that gacha. You had a 100% chance of getting Alexandra when you got an SSR. This is not a story gacha. This is just a regular unlimited gacha, meaning you can get spooked on this. So don't think that every single unlimited gacha is going to be a non-spook gacha, just very sp just specific ones. It, which is weird, because why is it not a story gacha? She's a main story character. 
She's as much a main story character as Alexandra is, and even more so, actually. Uh, but she, she apparently, I, I guess the reason why it's not a story gotcha is because they're not releasing a main story chapter at the same time. It's just some other random event that they're doing. Whatever. But yeah, you can get spooked on this. You're not guaranteed to get her like it was with Alexandra. So the Memoria, though, as I wanted to say, is it gives damage up 15% at maximum break. It gives, or at least I think it's maximum break. Actually, it might be without maximum break. Whatever, it just gives a bunch of damage up, it gives a bunch of excel up, and it gives a bunch of MP up. Which is both, like having both excel up and MP up on the same Memoria is already pretty darn poggers. And then on top of that, you also do get damage up. So you don't even have to sacrifice that much damage while still having a crap ton of excel up and MP gain up. That's pretty darn poggers. This is probably one of the best free to play, like free to play, not free to play, but one of the best unlimited Memoria that I've seen so far. At least I think it's unlimited. It should be unlimited. Um, and the other one down here is uh, evade chance to self and status resistance up, where it's pointless. I mean, it's a nice little art. You can see who's got the pants. It sounds odd because none of them are wearing pants, but who's wearing the pants in this relationship? It's a robbery. And yeah, it's, it's kind of pointless. So yeah, it seems quite all right. But yeah, once again, it's going to be an entire video about this, but if you wanted to just get my first few words of opinions on this if you want to draw or not now you know now you can now you know if you want to draw or not uh, also the event uh, it's apparently the 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 everyday life of the Nayuta household or something like that what's it called the peaceful daily life of Nayuta's family something like that um, where it, it, basically just the folklore of zero people uh, they're not officially Foggy Love right now because I don't think actually either of the two, uh, like Naruto and Mikage, actually know that Rabi is like the leader of Foggy Um But there's just a happy little family uh, with Mikage being the kid, of course, even though she kind of uh, just one day appeared in front of their house and was like, hey guys, feed me. And Rabi was like, okay, I'll feed you. And Naruto was like, Ugh, whatever, dude, She's, I guess she's our kid now. That's basically how that all came to be. Um, and apparently it's just a double farm town, so basically the same kind of event that we have right now, where you have to farm regular event, regular story quests to get uh, a material that you, yen, that you then use to play the event. Why am I explain this? We've, we've, we're having a double farm town right now, it's the same kind of event. And just like the event we currently have, there's not, there's not going to be 100 evils quests, sadly. Um, but this one only lasts for 10 days, so it's also not that long of an event. I feel like they're still gearing up for something bigger. Because this is two events now that I feel like I kind of filler. Um, so hopefully something bigger is going to happen soon. At least I f it feels like something big is about to happen uh, after this. But yeah, uh, just regular level farm. I don't think there's anything else special about this uh, uh, event. Wait a second, it's Chadu. Oh. Uh, yeah, I think this is just a... There's nothing special about here. What <laughs> you However, what is kind of special is the 1400 days since release campaign. Oh, cool. What do we have? What do we have? So, the 1400 days since release campaign has the following. First off, uh, what we have is um, two bags. We have a bag that are for 500 paid gems and for 300 paid gems. Yes, they're both for paid gems, meaning you have to actually have bought these with real money to uh, be able to get these bags. Uh, the basic, the fairly standard bags. The first one has the innocent gem, which gives allows you to give any slot to any character, I mean, any memorial slot that is to any character, unless you already have four, of course, um, which is kind of already pretty worth uh, if you are willing to spend a bunch of money, it's kind of all right. And then it also has some over limiter, which is also similar, which is, allows you to uh, give um, like one limit break to any memoria, just one. Like it's not going to get a memoria instantly to maximum break. It's just one star of limit break to any memoria uh, that you want, which can be quite interesting. And apart from that, it's a bunch of random materials. And the 300 paid gem bag has similar stuff, but it has for the high end stuff. A 10 roll ticket, a choose a four star memoria ticket, uh, which is, gives you a level one with no limit breaks uh, on a memoria that you, I'm going to show you down below. There's a selection for this. And a choose, choose which is a pick uh, of a four star unlimited character. So it has to be a, a, an unlimited character. And it is including all the unlimited characters until and including Mitsune. So any unlimited character that came after that, after Mitsune, which I think was just Sasha, uh, is not in here. 
Let's just search her. Someone else will see. Who is the character who just released? Sai? Is she unlimited? I still haven't checked if she's actually unlimited or not. She might be limited and I've been lying to you the entire time. But yeah, so all the unlimited characters from the release up until Mitsune and including Mitsune are part of this pick. Shows you right here how many there are. There's quite a lot. Um, and the memorials you can choose from from the memorial ticket are these. So if you pay for the 300 page stones back, you get to select one of these memorials, I think. I don't think they're maximum break. I think they're just level one or something. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Uh, ask another whale who buys this uh, if it's a maximum break or not. Probably isn't maximum break though. Uh, what else do we have? There's a login bonus. So every day you log in, you get a bunch of bonus stuff. Usually not that interesting. However, this time it actually is interesting. I've been making jokes recently how every single time they have a hundred days since release event, like two hundred days, three hundred days, four hundred days, five hundred days, etc. Every single time the rewards gets a tiny bit better. And I joked that at some point they're going to give away free four stars, right? If the rewards keep getting better, and they're giving away free four star. If you log in for seven consecutive days while this celebration is running, and I think it's running from the eleventh uh, to twenty one, so you have ten days. And in those 10 days, you have to look in during seven of those. On the seventh day, you'll get a ticket for a free four-star character. It's a random four-star character. It's basically the same pool that you have up here, like once again, uh, unlimited characters from release to and including Mitsune, but it's a random one, which is a random one out of any of these many characters, which is a lot. You're probably not gonna get who you want, like a one in 60 or whatever, to get whatever you want. But still, it's nice to just get a random four-star character for free. For free, isn't that isn't that nice? You have a chance of getting something like a Madoka, which is like a high tier pick that was still used by most whales in recent Kimochi. Like most top ten, not like the most teams in the top 100 Kimochi uh, battles use Madoka because he's still that powerful. Or you could get a character that isn't useful, like right after that Mummy, not very useful at all, terrible. But if you're lucky, you get Madoka. If you're not so lucky, you get Mummy. Awesome. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, half AP, double experience, double strengthening stuff. Like yeah. The the regular stuff with a bunch of bonus daily missions or something uh, whatever the, the regular stuff you have this every single time there's any celebration of anything so uh, with half ap and double player experience it's uh, it's it's horse beating time again get out your clubs and beat that horse to death um in those quests and that's about it i don't think there's anything else in here let me double check but yeah that should be about that um and we're the end of the news thank you everyone for watching hit that subscribe button ring the bell and i'll see you guys next time.